Um, so my name is Croy Zevier from Kinnick Software Systems, and we're a real-time operating system and middleware company. And I wanted to, to chat a little bit about what we're doing um, for concept applications for a number of our customers. Um, a, a typical application or ch customer challenge that we're working on right now is a customer will have a, a number of devices. Uh, many of them may actually be analog. Um, and they'd be looking to, to consolidate them together. Um, they may be coming from 16-bit devices um, and, and be new to the 32-bit world with an MMU. And, um, and then in addition to that, they're usually trying to add some sort of um, human interface or uh, UI control to a device that may previously have had something very simple or uh, have been headless in the past. Um, they're doing this for a number of reasons. First and foremost, they're trying to consolidate the devices because they're trying to cut costs. Um, they're trying to, I guess, merge a number of disparate software technologies together. Um, so they're trying to, I guess, consolidate and simplify the um, connectivity of devices is a common theme. Um, so usually they may have a, a device like a PLC controller um, in an industrial setting, or um, uh, or similar com similar control component, um, and instead of it being a kind of a, a standalone control device, it's now part of a uh, a networked uh, ecosystem of devices that need to communicate to each other and share information. Um, and then there's typically some sort of real time component and reliability component. Um, and then when you start to bring in the, the HMI technology, that makes these types of, of devices very complex um, to, to make and, and to bring together. So we started with, uh, with one concept piece, which is what would a, a next generation building management system or home automation system, what are some of the elements that we would bring together um, to enable this type of consolidation? So we're working with a number of devices um, in addition to a, a master device, which in this case is the Beagle board. Um, so we're working with things like um, temperature control, um, uh, uh, Insteon type devices, which control lighting elements. We're working with uh, smart metering technology um, to provide uh, metering data from a, a utility. Um, we're working with video surveillance um, feeds. Um, so the Beagle board is, is really kind of a, a great fit for this because you've got the, the DSP for um, video and sound processing, and, and you've got uh, um, the SGX for, for some really great graphics um, to interface into this and give kind of a, a different view into uh, uh, the different components on the network. So if we go to the, go to the next slide. One of the, the bigger challenges in this type of device, um, you know, once you've got the, uh, the baseline, baseline applications and drivers ported over uh, and the control components, is how do you bring in a, a, a rich HMI uh, to manage each of the different components? Um, and what we've done is we've been working with Adobe um, with embedded flashlight to act as a, a next generation windowing manager for a, a number of these different elements. Um, typically, um, in, in an embedded device, um, the, the concept for an interface would be managed by uh, a marketing group within an, within an engineering organization. Um, and then the interfaces have typically been coded in um, C or C++. On the lift device, that's going to be in service for five or 10 years without a lot of refresh. But as these devices begin to come closer to the consumer, um, then it makes it a lot more difficult um, to deploy that type of device because you typically have a, a much greater set of requirements. So typically, you're looking for um, the ability to refresh content. The devices are network aware. There's the desire to um, update content, both from the driver level all the way through to the HMI level without restarting the system, um, the HMI layer needs to be uh, quite reliable, um, obviously. Um, the device needs to be able to 
protect um, against some sort of malicious uh, entry or code, um, as most of these devices are, are networked. Um, the type of content that we're trying to integrate is complex. We're incorporating 3D rendering, um, video feed, um, browser content. These devices have some sort of uh, cloud component um, to the devices. We're bringing in third-party applications um, ranging everywhere from um, you know, Flickr and YouTube um, to uh, you know, custom applications from utilities and, and, and manufacturing facilities. So there's a lot of, a lot of different content uh, that, that's required to, to be brought in. So what we've done with Embedded Flash is we've actually gone and taken it and, and added a number of extensions to it um, that make it easier to integrate this, this, um, these additional types of, of content. Um, so we've added uh, database connectivity. Um, we've, uh, we're using the, uh, the Flash layer as a windowing system to be a host to other content. So instead of using Flash to play video natively, as an example, we'll bring in um, uh, MPEG-4 content or H.264. Um, and then we're integrating it with a number of other APIs to support OpenGL, OpenVG, OpenCode, um, and, uh, and just, of course, the native uh, action script. Um, so the types of devices that, that this is really useful for, um, any sort of control app, um, we're using this in automobiles for next generation digital instrument clusters. And if we go to the next slide, you can see some of the, uh, the concept screens that we're using for a, um, uh, an HVAC security um, and uh, a control application. So what you see on the screens here is you see a number of um, a, a number of views to uh, a reskinnable, you know, concept building where you can zoom into the various zones within the building. Um, it's connected to a, a mocked-up backend data source, and we're just in the process now of of actually integrating this with some Zigbee clients um, for some smart metering technology. Um, Any questions on that? If we go to the next slide, you can see the, um, the stack that we build out. So in addition to our core operating system, um, there's a number of core components that we bring to it. So there's um, multi-core capability. There's a fast boot component. So you can have a, an instant uh, on activation uh, for, the, uh, for the HMI components. Um, there's full device connectivity. Um, we're working with a number of devices where uh, they may want to bring in uh, third-party content through USB, Bluetooth, uh, th uh, drivers, SPI, I2C, serial, um, uh, a number of networking components. Uh, we have a, a native networking component that allows us to uh, attach multiple nodes to a system that are network aware and node aware. Uh, so that they can share resources across the network. Um, and then in the middleware space, we have uh, full audio video codec support um, for, for the DSP, um, the SGX uh, driver support. Um, uh, in the graphics space, we have our own uh, native windowing system, as well as the Adobe Flashlight um, for more advanced systems. Um, and then uh, we have a full uh, Eclipse tool base as well um, to develop uh, to develop your applications with. And then the last slide is um, um, uh, just uh, I, I guess the the breadth of our industrial networking, um, a combination of industrial protocols, uh, uh, a variety of uh, wireless security capabilities. Um, a lot of these are uh, uh, wireless-based devices that we're looking to deploy, possibly portable devices, um, and uh, represent their own security needs as well. Um, and then some of the, the lower bus-type connectivity, so CAN, uh, MOST, uh, Profinet, um, EtherCAT, uh, Profinet, uh, uh, and so forth. <coughs> 